here in Melbourne. Exhibit displayed 120 of McQueen's pieces ranging from his early collections to his final runway shows. The exhibit strove to capture the essence of his shows and their underlying narratives. The exhibition was arranged thematically instead of chronologically and I love every bit of it. I can't wait to show you which ones are my favorite so keep on watching. The Alexander McQueen Fall 2010 collection, entitled Angels and Demons, was one of the most memorable and dramatic collections. It was shown just months before his untimely death in 2010. The collection was inspired by the spiritual struggle between good and evil, with McQueen drawing on religious iconography and mythology. The collection also featured a range of garments from delicate lace dresses to sharply tailored suits to intricate embroidery and beadwork. You know, each one is different art. You know, there's so many things that go on in my mind and in the world. Everything changes. It could be a Neptune here was McQueen's collection in the spring, summer 2006. It looks to ancient Greece and mythos. And the collection underscored McQueen's desire to impart strength to the women wearing his creations. Interestingly, this collection got a really bad review from Vogue Sarah Maurer at that time. The darkened room creates a really good backdrop in highlighting McQueen's expertise in tailoring. At the core of every McQueen creation is his expertise in garment construction. I think the pieces in this gallery showcase his mastery of dressmaking and tailoring which he developed during his time as an apprentice tailor on Savile Row. McQueen's deep knowledge of technique also enabled him to deconstruct clothing, subvert garments, resulting in designs that combined sabotage and tradition. His unique remixing of traditional garments challenges societal norms and embraces the subversive nature of subculture styles. Throughout his career, I think he drew on his experience as an assistant pattern cutter in a stage costume job to create brilliant designs, history and period costumes such as this asymmetrical naval style coat which was so masterfully done. I think he only created three of these jackets. Now we go to a different room entitled Dangerous Bodies. I kind of like that. His expertise in tailoring and pattern making allowed him to skillfully deconstruct and reassemble clothing, reimagine clothing. His unconventional approach to fashion is also drawn from his rebellious expressions that is commonly found in the queer club scene. And McQueen's 
meticulousness extended beyond just the construction of his garments. He also employed creativity in his innovative use of materials, surface treatments, and immersion technologies like laser cutting and digital printing, which had a very significant impact on the fashion industry right now. McQueen's design language, which encompassed various codes, techniques, materials, and illusions aimed to go beyond conventional fashion standards. Quote unquote, I want people to be afraid of the women I dress. His desire was to create clothing that evoked a sense of intimidation, breaking away from the traditional notions of what fashion and women should be. I always remember how his collections aim to communicate the timeless and widespread significance of the subjects he explored. This has got to be my most favorite part of the exhibit. I feel like the 2006 fashion show was reimagined and revisited. In this arena, the collection Widows of Culloden takes center stage. The Widows of Culloden was a powerful and haunting collection in 2006. Inspired by his Scottish heritage and historical events, McQueen created a collection that mourned the past while embracing the future. The run representation I remember had a somber and atmospheric ambience featuring models adorned in tartan fabrics. Notably, one of the most remarkable pieces in the collection was the black and white dress with a tartan top and a flowing translucent skirt, which was both captivating and otherworldly. The penultimate outfit to grace a catwalk from that collection was the majestic ball gown crafted from ivory silk jacquard adorned with a beautiful motif of blooming branches and birds. I just had a lot of feels when I when I went to this area. It feels like you're in, in a private show and in a runway show all at the same time. The only one missing would be McQueen bowing at the end of the show. Well, the Horn of Plenty for Fall Winter 2009 collection was one of McQueen's probably most important social commentary. The fashion show featuring the collection included reused jewelry and had pieces and the center of the stage was piled high from discarded stage props and landfill finds. And there's also a nod to queer subculture icon Lee Bowery with his thick lips and very performative makeup. Yeah, it's a very powerful presentation, I remember. Not only that, he also made a parody on the famous haute couture designers such as Dior, Chanel, Yves Saint Laurent, and Givenchy by taking well-known silhouettes from these fashion, fashion houses. The message of this collection is all about how the world has accumulated piles of garbage and trash from fashion alone. One of the pieces that really drew me from that exhibit is this collection from spring-summer 2007. McQueen frequently looked to history of Western costume for inspiration, taking elements from men's and women's clothing, textiles, adornments from various eras. There is this delicately rouge black silk net that beautifully accentuates the curves of the body while mimicking the look and feel of crepe. He once stated that the basis for anything he does is craftsmanship. One of the most stunning installations in this exhibit is the black feathered raven cape. This foreshadows the deadly finale of the Queen's dancehall performance, I think it's entitled Deliverance, in spring-summer 2004. Oftentimes he used birds as a narrative in many of his collections, and as we all know, ravens, like all other birds of prey, are traditionally associated with death. Plato's Atlantis is McQueen's last completed collection. It depicts a 
futuristic narrative where humans have adapted to underwater life due to the effects of global warming. It's a beautiful story if you really think about it. So in that collection, there were a lot of like alien-like makeup, alien-like hair. The human body has morphed into this reptilian, animalistic, extraterrestrial entity. The collection stands out as one of McQueen's most remarkable works, owing to its exceptional concept, execution, and presentation. Despite the foreboding motif of this storyline, it doesn't have a pessimistic tone. Instead, it emphasizes the circularity of life. Water was a sanctuary for the designer and he viewed Atlantis as utopia, suggesting that destruction leads to regrowth. Growth and regeneration follow destruction. Do you like the show? I love the, I love the exhibit. And happy birthday to McQueen because it's his birthday yesterday. Room tour. We have the view of the fountain and the lake. Wow. It's a very cute place. Very small and narrow. And we have the kitchen. Toilet. Bathroom. Everything is black and gold. Oh my god, they got shampoo. Good. I like it. Funny thing is I didn't bring a jacket and I was supposed to because I was looking at the weather and things like that and I was even checking Instagram I mean people on Instagram who lives in Melbourne and they're all like wearing tank tops and shorts but it's so freezing I think it gets warm during the day but looking at the clouds I think it's gonna rain yeah I have an umbrella though and I'm wearing my boots and my layers accessories. I think it's too early for this. I'm just gonna hide it. <laughs> yeah. Just 
appreciate this amazing stool. It's a nice shop. Thank you, Vijo Carver, for recommending the shop. I hope you can see the amazing details in person. Houses. Oh my goodness, we don't have this in Queensland. Are you for real? Look at that. <laughs> Quiet neighborhood in here. Time to find another store and then I'm going to... I'm going back to CBD to check out GLDNN, which carries the men's Rick Owens. I'm just here at Fitzroy. Enjoying the peace. I love Bruce shop. Most of them are a bit out of my budget, but it's all good. It's nice to experience the clothes. <laughs> Are you a big fan of the um, oh, or the uh, yeah, the no, I, I love them. I have a couple.
at some shops again today. Yesterday was a bit productive. Hopefully today will be as good. So I'm all covered up because I learned my lesson yesterday. Yesterday I was wearing this the whole day. I mean, it's fair, it's good and stable, but I have to like be super aware how I walk and how I move the high platforms and high heels explains it all. I have to do a good major clean up. So this would be the perfect outfit, I guess. And I'm gonna wear fetish boots.
this is insane. Oh my goodness. So many buttons and layers. Nutilab is not just about aesthetics, it's a form of self-expression and communication. You can't handle my fashion forwardness, and you're clearly not cultured enough to appreciate it. My outfit is the perfect blend of style and confidence. I can't say the same for yours. My outfit speaks for itself, and it's saying that I'm a mutant. Like mutants from the Marvel comics, but better. My Neuter Lab outfit is a combination of creativity and courage, yours is a combination of boring and basic. My Neuter Lab outfit is a work of art, and you clearly don't have an eye for it. I don't just wear clothes. I wear Neuter Lab. I don't need fashion advice from someone who dresses like they're stuck in the past. My fashion choices are not for the faint of heart and certainly not an invitation for your opinion. I'm sorry, I didn't realize I was taking fashion advice from someone who don't own any neuter lab jacket. Gender neutral fashion is the future, and we all embrace it in the neuter lab universe. You see kid, when you put on the neuter lab capsule 2 jacket, people notice. My neuter lab outfit is not a mistake, it's a statement. Always genderless, always seasonal, always a masterpiece. It's always been new to lab all along. We're here at Creamy's office. Got some Rick Omen. So then that makes it hard. Because then we have like really cute stuff, but it's hmm. all like super small. From Babel. Just trying on some Rick here at Creamy Velvet. Scarpe um, Impel, that means like. Leather, I think. Yeah, that's leather. Yeah. Of course, it's not my size, but look at that. Thank you. What the nope. hell? The collection was like mm -hmm. One four, not bad. We had uh, it's a nice color. It's like chocolate. Yes, yeah. It's kind. It's really. It's kind of. It's. It's almost got a red undertone oh to it. Yeah. But the Smells braiding's good. really nice. Yeah. yeah. Can I see the collection? Sorry. Oh, it's not fair. Uh, we we had it's another one, and the thing was on it. Hold Usually, on. it's in the number. Thing. In the number. Oh, 17. Yeah. Maybe yeah. glitter or something. But at least we're close to the train. Basically. Yes, that's it. They've got this beautiful, oh my goodness. Yeah, maybe I'll try it on. Why not? Why not? Your store's been around for quite a while. Yeah, ages. They, 
they've been, um, they had this, a store, the store on Chapel Street and I worked for them when they were on Chapel Street, like all the way down the other end. And then we left there during COVID and we came up here when COVID kind of ah. stopped, you know, and we were allowed out again. Mm -hmm. But before that, they used to do like, oh, I think they used to do like archive and vintage stuff. Yeah. More fashion archive. Yeah, exactly. And then from different like, yeah, but they've been around, they've been doing it for like 20 years, a couple. So like, they used, they moved, they're always on Chapel Street, they moved to a few different shops, but now we just do new stuff. New like, stuff. it's just easier. Yeah. yeah but. Mm -hmm. so can you see, so do I need to do it? I'm like a, <laughs> on I like a, on a box, so it's that a bit higher. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, better. <laughs> I think this is like organza. And this is leather. But when I was in the Philippines, I do, um, I did fashion design. So yeah. Oh no, I'm a bit sweaty. Can I try this you one? Look great. <laughs> this is from Andy Lumenister. something something with what the diet hope. <laughs> like that my vlog is done i hope you enjoyed the vlog i hope you learned something don't forget to like subscribe and share follow me on instagram i'll see you again on my next video thank you for watching